I'll read it if it's a feature film or television. It comes to me and I read it. Uh, if it's something that looks like we can support, then I'll make my recommendations on it and send it to the Pentagon. And if we all come to an agreement, then we'll go to the production company and start hammering out uh, an agreement. It's a process. We, we provide notes to them. Hey, we can support this if you do this. They come back. Well, we really want to do that. And it's just kind of a give or take. Even if they want our support and want that accuracy which they, they come to us for, we have to understand that it is entertainment. Once there's agreement on the script, a project officer is assigned and stays with the production throughout shooting. In Hollywood, everything is based on relationships, so it's really important that we build a trust with the people that we're working with on entertainment productions, which is why a project officer is assigned for each project and they stay with that project their entire tenure in the office. Some argue the script approval process is a form of censorship, a charge Vince Ogilvie vehemently denies. We cannot stop a movie from being made. If you want to get your movie made, you can get that movie made with or without us. Allowance is often made for the fact that a movie is a fiction, a made-up story, and that filmmakers have personal visions of how their story should be told. I felt like the Pentagon was very forgiving when it came to understanding that there were certain leaps you have to make in science fiction. Uh, and so the combination was great. DOD will support projects that convey the military in a realistic light. Uh, it doesn't all have to be roses and bunnies, but it has to be realistic. Cut. Cut. you about this mission upon which we're about to embark it seems a bit ridiculous doesn't it have you met general ryan hello colonel the general ryan chief of staff that's right shouldn't there have been a memo or something a real air force chief of staff showing up on a sci-fi tv show playing himself the general ryan it's a bit I read a lot about you. unexpected, but in 2001, there was then Chief of Staff General Michael Ryan in a cameo role on an episode of Stargate SG-1. By that point, the Air Force and the program had an unusually close relationship. Stargate SG-1 was on the air from 1997 to 2007, first on Showtime, then on the Sci-Fi Channel. Our Stargate's relationship with the Air Force really began in Season 1 uh, during the filming of the pilot when we went through the regular channels to ask for stock footage and and they said well if 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 any Air Force personnel or or locations are going to um, appear in the film we need to we need to vet the script we need to look at it and we basically at that point asked the question well would you mind reading it for authenticity we've been so lucky that the Air Force has been so supportive of the show from word one that we had we've always had advisors who have come to set and visited and and who sent notes down whenever we've shot something and they've gone no 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 they wouldn't do this we've been involved with the show for so long there's an inherent relationship it's almost as if our office is part of the family but there's still that line that we keep that professionalism between us and the show and that the show keeps between themselves and with us in this science fictional world Stargates allow near instantaneous interstellar travel. They were put in place by ancient aliens. It's produced mostly in Vancouver, British Columbia. Over its 11 year run, it became an international cult favorite and spawned several spin offs. An animated version ran for one year, Stargate Atlantis for four years, and two direct to DVD feature films will be released in 2008. Stargate SG-1 portrays an Air Force team that travels throughout the galaxy to find and defend the Earth against potential enemies. Amanda Tapping's character, Samantha Carter, has advanced from captain to lieutenant colonel over the seasons. Apparently I've had an impact on recruiting. I've met countless men and mostly women who have come up to me and said that they joined the Air Force because of my character. Air Force. 
therefore, if we assume the existence of 10 dimensions in space-time, the variables are canceled out and the calculations suddenly begin to make sense. Excuse me, ma'am. In 2001, the brand new Air Force logo made its public debut on a lectern when Colonel Carter went to the Air Force Academy as a guest instructor. There's a sense of responsibility. You don't want to mess this up. You don't want to do it in a way that's not honest and not true to the way these people are living their lives. Our F-A-22s and ABLs are all in the air. By the way, a second Air Force Chief of Staff showed up on Stargate SG-1. In 2003, General John Jumper appeared in a scene with fictional President William Devane as an alien invasion was imminent. Sir, 30 plus ships just appeared in orbit, taking station around the planet. We would built an Oval Office set, and my favorite comment from General Jumper was, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty much like the real one. <laughs> I thought that was cool. In the heart of Hollywood, producer Don Belisario has been turning out hit TV series since the 1970s, including JAG, the longest-running military-themed TV series ever. His current show, NCIS. He's a Marine veteran who understands what real military locations and personnel can bring to a production. I like to try to use actual military personnel because I don't have to go around and say, no, you don't salute like this. That's... He knows military support can bring realism. We have had times where they've said to me, you know, this isn't the procedure we're, we'd follow. You know, it, it would be more this kind of a procedure. And I'd say, well, okay, that doesn't affect my story. I can change that. And sometimes he chooses to go it alone. On one episode of JAG, he wrote a script centered around losing a nuclear torpedo during an exercise. So in that case, they said, well, we, we, we just can't help you on this one, Don. And I understood, you know, and they understood. I said, well, all the drama goes out of the story. If I don't suddenly show up, there's a missing nuke. The hit series 24 makes frequent requests for Department of Defense support because preparation and shooting time are much more accelerated in TV production than in feature films. Requests often are made on relatively short notice, sometimes as little as three weeks. It has been an interesting dance where I think we have a lot of military uh, and, and defense department uh, uh, people who are fans of the show. That has always helped. In 24, each season unfolds the events of a single day, and each episode is an hour of that day. In season six, writers had the idea that terrorists would take over a U.S. submarine. The bad guys had acquired uh, access to a U.S. nuclear sub and were going to turn its missiles on the U.S. population. Three minutes to launch. Series star Kiefer Sutherland plays counter-terrorist agent Jack Bauer, who eventually foils the plan, but barely. Producers approached the Navy about two months before the episode was scheduled to be shot, requesting access to a real submarine. When I first called up and said, uh, we have this story where the bad guys take over a Navy sub. Would you guys be at all interested? I don't know. Let us find out. You know, and then it evolved into something else where it wasn't a Navy sub. It was a Russian sub in a Navy port. The action was still the same, but it took the onus off of the, the Navy, and they were able to give us the support. The scene was shot aboard the USS Topeka while docked in San Diego. When we're down there shooting in the torpedo room, there's no way to duplicate that, having been there. You know, nothing's tight enough, nothing's jammed, got enough equipment jammed into it. You'd never build a set that way. It makes it bigger, it makes it more interesting, it makes it more real, and it validates what is a huge part of our show, which is that the stakes are high. Back on! Camera! 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 The Air Force PA office asked us to participate uh, with a couple airplanes for the filming of Stargate after we were involved with an episode in 24. We're always willing to, to put our airplanes out on, on the TV or, or any kind of media for, uh, for recruiting purposes. On the tarmac in Vancouver, British Columbia, two Oregon Air National Guard F-15s to be featured in one of the Stargate feature films. They're part of the storyline for Stargate Continuum, which uh, the Air Force has generously come up to allow us to sit in a seat. 